So in today's second installment in the Rapid Form Studies series, we're going to see how Rhino7's new subdivision modeling tools can help us make more organic, more sculptural models really easily. So if you're interested in doing more sculptural, more organic kinds of modeling, you'll be happy to know that the work in progress version of Rhino, or Rhino7 as I usually call it, is going to ship with a whole set of subdivision tools that allow us to make those kind of models much more easily. Now, these won't be new tools by any means, although they will be new to Rhino. As a matter of fact, Rhino used to have a really great subdivision surface modeling plugin called T-Splines, but alas, it is no longer with us. And one for my homies. Programs like 3ds Max, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, they've used this kind of modeling for a long, long time. If you're familiar with those programs, feel free to go ahead and skip this video. You probably know how to do most of this already. But what you may not want to miss is the video we have on how to import those files into Rhino and convert them into native Rhino geometry. So check that out. So let's get started with some organic massing modeling here in Rhino 7. And that brings up a good point. Uh, if you're trying to follow along with this video and you're using Rhino 6, you will have a difficult time because the commands don't exist in Rhino 6. You'll need to get Rhino 7 in order to make use of Rhino's new sub D functionality. So uh, if you don't already have it, go ahead and check out that video we've got on downloading your copy of Rhino 7 and come back here and follow along after you download and install that new version. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened up the same file we were using in the previous massing and form study video, and I wanted to use this to kind of illustrate a, a new approach that these subdivision modeling tools allow us to take the kind of new forms they make available to us natively here in Rhino, and how we might go about solving a similar problem just with a different set of tools. So I've got the same studies I had here last time, and I want to keep the brief more or less the same. I want to try and uh, execute an option here for a low perimeter block with a vertical tower element attached to it. Only this time with these new tools I want to try and ease this hard transition between the block and the tower just to kind of give me a second option that's sort of a distinct family of options or kind of at least on its way to being a family of options. So I've actually already done this just to show you how this works, this is kind of one pass at this. And while it doesn't look that much different right now, in fact, it looks much worse, uh, once I apply subdivision to this, I'm going to say 2 sub D. So that's going to create a subdivision object from this mesh. I'm going to set creases to yes, corners to no, and I'm going to say yes to delete input. And this is the result. It's a kind of smoothing process using that input mesh and now I have a kind of angled top facet tapering down and out and into this low perimeter block. So we're going to try and craft this solution here using Rhino's new subdivision tools and see how we might be able to leverage some of these to our advantage. So I'm going to start off here by deleting this sample geometry and recreating it or something like it here from scratch. So I'm going to start by creating a mesh box. And I want to make sure that the X, Y, and Z face counts are all set to 1. And I'm going to go ahead and use this low block massing here as my template. And I'm going to slide this geometry out. So what happens when we subdivide this block? I'll use 2 sub D. And I get this kind of bean looking shape. Um, and this is the result of smoothing any simple box here. Uh, by the way, this needs to be a mesh box. I can't use NURBS geometry. The workflow we're going to establish is going to go from a mesh to a subdivision object, and then ultimately we're going to convert that to Rhino NURBS. Uh, so this is what happens when you smooth a simple box. You get a just a round shape. We need to add and sculpt in the detail that we want and we need to use the new subdivision modeling tools in order to do this. The simplest of which is Extrude. The nice part about Extrude is that we are going to use it very similarly to how we used sub-object selection and edits with the gumball in the previous massing model video. Uh, if that doesn't mean anything to you, go back and watch that video and then come back right here uh, to this point in the video and I think it'll make a lot more sense. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use sub object selection to grab a face here. And instead of moving, although I could move, instead of just moving, I'm going to grab this handle that's right in between the arrow and the origin. It's this little dot right here. And I'm going to pull this up and I can already see this is now no longer smoothed over in the Z direction quite as much. I have something that has added definition and there are now new faces, edges, and vertices that are defining this object. Uh, one other thing I might want to do here is I'm going to go to my options menu, go to my gumball, so under Rhino options, modeling aids, gumball, and I'm going to double the size of everything here. So if I type in 160 or double whatever the value is for my gumball radius, all these other values should update. I'll say OK. I'll use sub object selection again to grab that face. And now we have something that's a little easier to see those handles on. So I have the ability to extrude faces directly from this uh, gumball tool, as well as all the normal tools I've had in the past, which are scale, uh, move, and rotate. OK, so this is a little bit more clear now. I think we're making some progress. But we're still pretty far from the form that we had talked about. So how do we get to that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sub D, and I'm going to take the massing I'm interested in, and I'm going to isolate them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sculpt over this geometry with my sub D object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the geometry I know I want to sculpt over, and I'm going to just lock it. And this is going to serve as a kind of template for me for how this subdivision should get sculpted. So I'm going to drop myself here into ghosted mode, and I'm going to move my subdivision object right on over on top of my, my massing here. Now, this can be a little bit difficult if you're dealing with kind of this smoothed over geometry. It doesn't actually look much like this kind of faceted geometry. Um, and what I want to do is to be able to go back and forth here between my uh, a, a version of this model that is boxy, like a kind of box mode, and this smooth mode. If any of you are familiar with T-splines, this is going to be incredibly familiar. If any of you have ever used any subdivision modeling tools before, this is going to seem like second nature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my control points on, and these points are what the vertices of the mesh that when subdivided becomes this smoothed object. This is a sort of control polygon as it's known of this subdivision surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to move points here onto my target massing. By the way, if your control polygon does not look like this, what you might want to do is go to Options. I'm in ghosted mode here, so I'm going to remember that. Come down to View, go to Display Modes, and Ghosted, and go to Objects. And here, under Control Points, my control polygon usage, I have these set to Solid Line, just to make this a little more visible so I can see what's going on. Um, and that's why they're showing up here. If yours are coming in dashed, that's why. I'm going to move these points right on over. And I'm basically just sculpting these points into place OK, so I have my control polygon here. And everything has been lined up with the vertices on the sample massing that I had. So if I was to unlock and hide these other elements. This is still, you know, pretty far from from what we had even though this control polygon is basically the exact same shape. Now what I need to do is I need to go in here and add some definition to this whole thing in order to make this a little more rigid and have it have the appearance of being a block instead of just a sort of smoothed over blob. So I can use more extrusions to get that done.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to escape out of my control polygon. I'll switch over to shaded mode. And what I want to do is I want to actually take a look here at the selection filter. Now when I'm doing a lot of edits in sub object mode, I actually want to start engaging this sub objects filter here. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent me from grabbing the entire object when I click on it. And it's going to let me just select a face or maybe an edge or maybe a vertex when I click. And this certainly beats always having to remember to hold control and shift and all of the difficulties that brings about when you're trying to add and subtract from selection. So um, take a look at this sub objects filter and make use of it where appropriate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this low front face and just extrude out a very small bit. Doesn't need to be much. I'm going to grab the two sides here. One was just created when I extruded. The other one was there from before and just slightly extrude out. I'm going to do the same thing on this opposite side. Grab these two faces and extrude out. And in the back here, I now want to grab these three faces and extrude backward. All right, so we're quite a bit closer to what we were after, but we still do need to make a few more edits, add a few more features, uh, so we don't end up with a conehead looking building here. Um, so I'm going to uh, take a look at what the control polygon for this looks like. and. Um, so right now we said if we turn points on, we can see basically the kind of the outline of that control polygon. But if I want to get this specifically and kind of more closely examine edge flow and things like that, I can take my sub D object here and run the command extract control polygon. And I get that mesh that is being used right now for, uh, for the subdivision surface underneath. So I can just delete this one real quick. And this is the, the surface that I have here to work with. So I know I need to tighten things up uh, around the top here. So I can use a different command that I couldn't use uh, when I'm in sub D mode, and that is insert edge. So if I use insert edge, I'm going to select, it asks me to select an edge from the ring. I'm going to select this edge and you can kind of see here, it's hard to make out, but it highlights the other edges that it's going to make that ring around yellow. I hit enter and now I'm inserting an edge loop. So this would be basically the equivalent if I had extruded this face, but it's like, I don't have to extrude the face. The face is remaining in position and I'm just adding an edge loop around here at the top, which should help add some definition. So if I just quickly look at the sub D as a result of this already much closer, less cone like. And if I want to kind of get some more definition in these edges, I can do something kind of similar. So in this case, I think I'm going to activate my sub object mode and select these faces and let's see what happens if I extrude out. Mm, this actually might not be what I want. Let's try inserting an edge actually. If I go around this way, this might this might be what I want. Do something there. And a second one maybe back here. And this should add quite a bit to help make this stand out a bit. So two sub D. We're much more in the neighborhood. A lot better here. So I might call this one done for now for this study. I'd probably, you know, I'm, this obviously isn't a, a perfect creation here. I'm just going to jump back into sub object mode and maybe pull these faces out a little more on the front just to kind of square things up a little. I 
yeah, so there's probably some editing still to do with this to get exactly the look that we want in terms of how this turns the corner and everything. These edges are a little, a little snug. So I'll pull those back. But you can see it's a very kind of sculptural, very intuitive way of modeling that I think fits in well here as a kind of follow up to our previous discussion, looking at control points or solid points and editing that way. And if I show and I take a look at everything, I'll select that sub D and drag it on out. I think this is a kind of an interesting alternative and certainly presents a little bit differently uh, in terms of its articulation of this massing. And this is just kind of like one quick pass at this. There's certainly other subdivision modeling tools and skills that you would need if you kind of want to fully realize all the power of these. But I think this is a good run through of the kind of workflow that subdivision surface modeling can give us. I'm really excited that it's going to be a part of Rhino 7. The great news is this also kind of is a sort of force multiplier if you want to think about it that way for Rhino. Um, so if you happen to use another program and are adept at subdivision modeling there, we're going to be able to import and deal with those surfaces natively in Rhino in a way that was either limited before or not possible at all if you uh, didn't have uh, the uh, plugins uh, required. Um, so this is, this is really exciting. So let me know if you guys have any questions about the subdivision surface workflow in uh, the new Rhino work in progress. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know how much of it will uh, stay the same from now until when you have your questions or maybe you know, you're watching this video much later and Rhino 7 is in full force and it doesn't look anything like this anymore. Maybe it's totally transformed and fully built out. But uh, go ahead and throw your questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And oh, one last thing. Uh, you can take your sub D surface. Let me get out of sub object mode there. And I'm just going to make a copy of this for the purposes of this here. And the last thing you want to do is two NURBS. And I'm going to tell it to delete the input. And it's a pretty seamless transition here. This is now just a good old fashioned Rhino poly surface. So all your normal Rhino commands will now work on this. Uh, so yeah, so this is a, a really exciting development and I'm excited to see how it uh, progresses in the future. But until then, uh, happy modeling.